Hello everybody, I am Shitanshu from Dream Abroad and today in this video I've got a very special guest with me. Hello Naveen. Hi Shitanshu, thanks for having me. Naveen is an entrepreneur, he is a permanent resident and in this video we'll talk about his journey in Canada, we'll talk about the problems that he has faced being an entrepreneur, why did he start uh, his career as an entrepreneur in Canada and we'll talk about the office, we'll talk about a lot of interesting stuff so don't go anywhere, I'll be right back. While I'm waiting for Naveen here, let's just try to find his office in this directory. So here we have uh, the office pretty clearly mentioned. Okay guys, so we've got Naveen here and I've got a very interesting story to share with you guys how I actually got to meet him. So I went, went to my dentist where I you know, stumbled upon this magazine and it had his success story. So I thought of contacting him, uh, luckily I met him in a new immigrant workshop uh, which like a couple of weeks ago and luckily I got to catch hold of him. So uh, thank you Naveen for agreeing to do this because not everyone is you know, comfortable in front of the cameras. Thank so you. thank you again and uh, to start the video can you just introduce yourself and let our audience know about uh, what is you know uh, how you actually started your career and how did you land in Canada. Yeah sure, thanks for having me. So. Uh, all my life, uh, I've been in IT. Um, I've, you know, spent 18 years working for various companies. Um, I've travelled a lot. Uh, there's always one thing which uh, bothered me that I wanted to do something else, and my passion has always been in finance. So I started working, uh, uh, you know, in, in different places, and then I wanted to do, you know, get some credentials in finance industry. So I started working on my CFA back in 2013. Um, cleared the level so I was in job and then I, uh, I thought of uh, making the move and I, when I at that time I was in India um, I thought that uh, I wanted to change a career but I want to also do it where the ecosystem of a prospect of a change is well accepted by the society by the peers and that's where we decided that we wanted to go to Canada uh, we applied for a PR in 2014 uh, and then we landed as PR immigrant in in Ottawa in 2015 with family. Ever since, uh, the support with family has been tremendous. Uh, it's not an easy decision to make a change. Um, after spending a couple of years uh, in Ottawa, I decided that it's time uh, to make the change. And that's where uh, I, I applied for my uh, investment license um, as an associate investment advisor with Hollis Wealth, which is the division of Industrial Alliance Securities. Uh, and started this firm in 2017 uh, in Ottawa. So that has been the journey. Uh, so the change, the ecosystem, the help uh, around the community has been tremendous, really helpful people. And uh, whoever I worked with, uh, they really helped me uh, move forward in what I wanted to do always. And that's uh, that's where my journey started. All right, pretty interesting. So uh, for, like, how would you actually rate the ecosystem of uh, being an entrepreneur here in Canada, so like, is it pretty helpful? Like, uh, do you get support from government? Do you get support from the, from the people? Uh, obviously, you tell you told about your family, but what about you no know, other other ecosystem? Uh, the, like, overall in total. So I would say um, the change uh, is accepted really nicely here. As in, if you want to uh, do something and you're really passionate about. Um, Whichever field you go in, there's uh, lots of material to read about how do you make the transition and whichever industry you want to go and work for. I work for finance industry and the people who I worked with, they really helped me uh, understand what was required, they really helped me along the way and I was never judged that how come a person with an IT background coming into finance. I was accepted that I was something who want to do and help families and businesses in my own area of expertise. And uh, the mentorship has been really nice. Um, whoever I turn to in, in our own company, they really wel wel welcome me with open arms. Right? Um, so the support from the government is really nice. Lots of material, uh, setting up a company, very nice, easy. If you want to go apply for a place to rent, very easy. 
right so people understand it it's, it's part of this uh, you know dna uh, in canada that you are welcome when you want to make a change nobody judges you um, that uh, you are trying to do something different so i would say the support has been tremendous all right and what about your company do you like to tell about uh, your company yeah so as i said that um, i'm an um, associate investment advisor um, i work for hollis wealth as uh, a division of industrial alliance um, i started and registered my firm in back in 2017 uh, its name is accurata wealth management uh, what we do is we are aro licensed uh, investment advisors we help uh, families uh, to manage their financial well being uh, from you know managing their registered accounts investing on their behalf and we also handle insurance for both businesses and families um uh, eventually what happens is when you talk to families uh, and people who are landing new i see that most of the time we come with a preconceived notion of what we have seen in our home country back uh, back home and i try to help them in a way uh, telling them what it means in canada once you are in canada and make the transition for them and have a meaningful conversation in terms of so it's more of educating them first and i really like talking about uh, this because if you set the foundation right at the beginning it goes a long way and there's a big trust factor between us and the family so i really like what i do all right navin so maybe we can do the walking and talking sure um so you must have faced some problems being an entrepreneur in canada maybe if you want to rephrase it to challenges so what are the challenges or the problems that you have faced uh, in the past couple of years being an entrepreneur in canada so yeah as you rightly mentioned uh, there are challenges in every every small uh, decision you make uh, as an entrepreneur is your own decision you have to stand up to it so decisions have been um, for me in my industry as in which softwares to pick which providers to work for where do you want to set up your office what all you should look at an office space um, the the connectivity the approach for people um so those decisions have been in the primary uh, you know driver have been the primary drivers for me um i made some decisions which did not turn out well so i had to do some uh, trial hit and trial and see which one works best for me and the firm um which uh, partners to work with uh, some who are very good on paper they don't turn out to be as good as when you meet them um office spaces uh, i've looked at many office spaces and then we ultimately pick this up this place uh, because it's well connected um you all have to have to see what kind of uh, fiber connectivity you get um, uh, you know for your telephone connections how can people easily reach you uh, is the software good enough to take scalability so those kind of things mattered a lot for for our practice and uh, luckily now i have a working solution which works in all aspects of my business and that has been my story so far Right so uh, you talked about the office space so we are here basically in uh, Mississauga Mississauga is very close to uh, to Toronto and your office is right at the heart of Mississauga yeah so how difficult or how easy was it to get this office and can you just tell us about this office and can you give us a short tour of your office if that's oh, possible sure 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 all sure. right thank you so much yeah so office this office the reason you mentioned exactly is heart of the city yeah. um it's 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 approachable from every direction mm mm-hmm. and then it's right next to square one mm-hmm. and that's what we wanted when we looked at very many office spaces it doesn't give a feel of um you know where it's a secluded people should be able to connect easily able to visit us and um, yeah that's that's one main reason why we picked this up for sure so can we go and have a look to your office oh yeah sure let's let's go okay so shitanj this is the reception um then uh, this is our breakout area for tea coffee and snacks nice uh this is our board room where we have our uh, meetings and everything So what's the capacity of this room? Uh 15 people. 15 people, all right. Okay. So let's come and see the office now. So this is uh this is the office. Um this is my setup. So I remember when my days in IT um I used to have uh you know a setup which was given by and provided by the company here. I uh, I have my own setup the way I want to look things and work on. 
I see these fancy desktops. What about these ones? Um, so it is required for my own work uh, in terms of charting and everything. Um, uh, earlier I had six, but then I thought three is more than sufficient for me. Uh, so six moved, desktops? Yes, and I moved three of them back home and three here now. Uh, thank you, Naveen, for showing us your office and letting us in there. So what are the deciding factors that uh, come when you actually go on to choose your office? The location, the size, uh, maybe the space, maybe the staff. How do you actually choose all of these? So. Uh, it depends on which industry you work for. There are industries where you as a business owner would like to go and meet people. Um, there are few businesses where you would like clients to come and meet you, uh, which is our case. So if, if there are clients coming in and meet, meet you in your own office, uh, the first thing you look at is the place is well connected, it's secured, um, easily accessible in terms of information, public transport, uh, parking, uh, you look at places which has uh, you know expandable option in terms of if you want to expand uh, there are options easily available um, the support staff who look after the office space is nice clean and tidy for sure uh, those options but if you are an entrepreneur who is looking out for an option who would like to go and meet people then you probably look for a more mobile space a shared space and do not want to commit to a fixed rental office um, arch is more in terms of when you come, you need to have a fixed space. We, we want it and we like this place because there's an expandable option. We can go and get more office spaces as we want. We can expand, we can retract when we need to. Um, the, you know, the executive spaces here are really nice in terms of the reception, their answering, um, their address to our customers. Um, we can use the other uh, features within the building. We can connect to various uh, professionals around us. So that gives us an ecosystem to you know work and thrive us better and help our customers better. Okay, I mean, so talking about the entrepreneurship, how difficult is it to you know be an entrepreneur versus uh, working in a job? So uh, let's let's put it this way: uh, while you are in job, you can uh, you have a fixed stream of income, right? Uh, you get taxed accordingly. The decisions are everything you get in your back, and then you decide what to do. Uh, when you're an entrepreneur, you can decide how much to spend, where to spend in a given year or a given quarter. And then you can spread your expenses accordingly to minimize your business taxes. So that is one of the freedoms and choices you have while you work for your own self vis-a-vis uh, -vis when you work uh, in the job. So. Uh, Working for yourself definitely means that the business income is always taxed lower than a personal income, right? That also gives us a choice when we want to hire people, uh, when we want to spend, um, and that those expenses are deductible from our business income. So, in a way, you decide and balance out when do you want to spend and where to spend. Uh, and while you're in job, you cannot just do that. You get everything in your bank and then you decide where do you want to spend it. So that's the key difference. We can decide when to withdraw money as income, as dividends, while in, in business, and that just gives us, uh, you know, benefits over uh, on those decisions, right? Monetary decisions. All right. So thank you so much, Naveen, thank you, for thank uh, agreeing to do this video and helping our audience with all of these, uh, you know, important uh, question and answers. We can yeah. have more videos if you have time. Sure. I'm pretty sure our audience would be interested to know much more about the financial well-being of their families in Canada. So if uh, you have got any questions, maybe you can put down in the comments below and we can have more question and answer the FAQs kind of a video with Naveen and I'm pretty sure with his expertise in the finance field and wealth management, he can help you with your family's financial well-being here in Canada. If you haven't subscribed my channel yet and if you want to see more of these kind of videos, you can subscribe and obviously put your feedback down in the comment section below.